Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I have the absolute honour and joy and privilege and pleasure of being joined by the one and only Sam. What is your handle, Sam? It's uh, Polyglow Sam, is that right? Yes, that's correct. It's a pleasure to be here, my friend. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, let's do this. We've got 20 questions, quick fire questions, because we don't have much time today. Both of us busy men. So let's jump straight into the quick fire questions all about language learning. Let's go. Right. Try and keep the, your answers as short as possible, like one minute maximum. Let's do this right. Okay. Awesome. How many languages do you currently speak fluently? All right. Man, Without getting get into what there. fluency is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so got fluently there. So fluently, I speak English, of course. I'm speaking English right now. Portuguese is my native language. I also speak uh, fluent Spanish. Although I need to practice more to like get back to the level that I was, but it's still fluent. Um, French, I don't consider myself fluent in, but I'm like not far away from fluency. Like I can do basically anything in French. It's just that I like, haven't had enough contact with the language lately to say that I'm like super confident to like go and like, do a lecture, for example, right? In French. Well, those are the, the ones that speak the best, yeah. Okay. So you'd say like probably four, solidly. Yeah. English, yeah, Portuguese, yeah, yeah. Spanish, and French. They're your strongest yeah. languages. Exactly. Which was the first foreign language you learned? After well, obviously you English. learned, yeah, <laughs> obviously. And after English, English that's, that, yeah, after English it was like Spanish, uh, because of course I live in Brazil, so definitely was like a, an obvious choice for me to learn Spanish because of the time spent with the language. Like I wouldn't have to spend so much time because it's a lot of vocabulary we have shared vocabulary, so I just have to I just had to learn a little bit of grammar and differences. Yeah. Quite understandable, that isn't it? English, the international language, and then jumping down to Spanish, it's not much of a leap, is it? What language do you find the most challenging to speak? Yeah, that's a difficult question. It used to be Russian, it but now it's Russian. Chinese. Ooh. Definitely Chinese. <laughs> Chinese and Russian, man. Chinese is harder than Russian, yeah? Officially. To speak, yeah, officially, like, definitely. I think to speak, yeah. Because, like, you have no, like, background. If you have no background, it's really, really hard to, like, get all this vocabulary in, all these differences, the cultural part. is really, really hard. Do you have a polyglot you look up to? Who inspired you to learn foreign languages? Man, that's so hard. So many, but, like... If I had to name, like, I'm just going to try to name three, just to be fast. Uh, I'm going to say Tim Donner. I have to say Tim Donner, man. Tim Donner, I say Luca Lampariello, and ah, for number three, I'm going to say Richard Simcott because of uh, how much I've, like, watched from him and how much he's done for the community, you know. So those three, Tim Donner, uh, Luca Lampariello, and Richard Simcott. What is your favorite language learning resource or app? All right, man, that's good. Uh, I'm not actually like a huge fan of apps, but I have to say two that I use the most are Tandem to practice conversation and um, also Duolingo, even though like I don't like, you know, really love Duolingo. I don't use Duolingo as a major source like of my learning, but I like to, I like the part of the streak that keeps me uh, disciplined and also the um, you know, just for languages like Chinese, for example, they are really, really good for languages that you don't know a lot about, you know, just languages they're figuring out. But I think uh, you don't speak much there and don't listen much there. So, like, it's not really my cup of tea, but I use it to, to like, learn those languages that are more difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be a really good one to get in touch with the language, like, initially, like, to get familiar with it. But, yeah, they're relying on apps to learn languages. <laughs> big mistake, big mistake. Use them, but don't rely on them. Okay. Yeah, have you ever had, I'm guessing you have, a funny uh, or embarrassing language related, language learning uh, related, uh, like misunderstanding? Do you know, like the classic for me, it was, uh, I, I was in Spain and I asked for uh, una polla entera instead of un pollo entero, <laughs> you know, like, it's quite a bad one, but have you ever had one of those? Yeah. Does anything stand out? Damn. I had so many. Uh, I have to think. I think in Serbian. Um, what what was it? Um, man, oh, it's so hard to remember really fast. But I, I've had so many. I've had so many. I think. Um, 
Okay, so like with, with Italian, I mean, it's not like really one of like a situation that I said something in Italian, but when I was speaking Portuguese, uh, uh, this is what that comes to my mind. Uh, the Italians find it really funny when we say the word fica in Portuguese, you know, fica, <laughs> because it sounds <laughs> yeah. like <laughs> in Italian. So like this, I mean, it's funny. It's not like actually a mistake that I made, but like I've had so many, it's just so hard to remember all of them now, but so many in different languages. But that's why it's so hard. All languages come to my mind, and I think about Serbian, I think about in German. But that happened many times, man. It happens all the time. <laughs> man, I think the Italians are just immature. You know, like even my girlfriend now, when I when I say like, oh, there are, there are a lot of cats around here, she's like, smooth cats. You know, like cats, cats. Uh, oh my god. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another one they love. You know, they love that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like yeah, cats? It's... Yes, I love cats. <laughs> <laughs> It's similar to Brazil. Brazil's kind of like that too, I think. We're, we're similar in that, that sense. Which language do you think has the most beautiful sound or rhythm? Ah, uh, I'm going to say French. French, definitely. I love how French sounds. I love like, you know, I just feel yeah. so sophisticated, you know. When you speak good French, I just feel like, you know, man, I'm, I'm, I'm good at this, you know. Like, I feel like more confident already. <laughs> Yeah, French is underrated for sure. Have you ever, yeah. I know the answer to this, it's going to be yes. Have you ever dreamt in a language that you were learning, like had a dream? Absolutely. And also, I've had a dream in multiple languages, and that was amazing. Like, I, I dreamt I was in an event. <laughs> Actually, I think I was talking to people, like, from di in different languages, and that was the dream. And it was really good. Like, it was, felt really real, and uh, it was really uh, rewarding thing because I felt like man my brain is really like you know in this you know where I'm really in this you know do you have a favorite word or phrase in any of the languages that you speak so whatever comes to mind I'll put you on the spot a bit with that one I know but like have you got like a favorite word or a phrase that you'd like yeah that's a great great expression great word I really do actually I do like with Serbian I have a, a, a phrase called like that's like someone after it that means I only forward, which is like the only way is forward. So it's like when you make mistakes or when you're feeling like, you know, oh, you know, not so, not so good. And people say, and then they're down and people say, bro, someone after it, you know, brate, someone after it. And that means like, you know, the only way is forward, like move, keep going, you know, just keep going. It's going to be good. Like things are going to get better. <laughs> Man, I love that one. I love that one. Yeah. yeah uh, can you switch between languages? seamlessly in the middle of a conversation i wouldn't say seamlessly but definitely like there was a point in my life when i was doing like live streams all the time that i was doing this so often that it was almost seamless um but now i feel like um i need some practice to get back to that level again sometimes when i change for example especially from serbian to italian something happens in my brain that like my brain can't tell the difference when i'm speaking on one of those also, like, I know it's very different, but the thing is the sound is similar. That's the thing. My, my brain just notices the sound kind of like my, my subconscious mind, right? Only notices the sound of it. So when I'm speaking and I say, for example, Mi chiamo la la, or something like that, uh, in Serbian, the ah, 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 cha, 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 cha. I, I hear like this and I, I remember Serbian, you know, for some reason. Yeah, okay, like the cut and the ch sounds, I guess, yeah, you know, triggers exactly. that part of your brain. Interesting. Exactly. Do you have a specific language learning routine that you practice every day? Yeah, uh, so basically I like to listen to stuff every single day. I have to listen to like a podcast or even radio, but I listen to something every day. Uh, I'm trying to read more lately because I think that reading is also good, like to learn vocabulary. But this is more when you know something about the language, right? So for Chinese, my routine is different. For Chinese, I just do like Duolingo lessons. I talk to to a friend, to friends actually from China, and uh, on I actually have WeChat, so I, I managed to get a WeChat account. So that's a uh, how we talk. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Just a bunch of listening. Sometimes I read. I also talk to my friends every day. So conversation for me is like talk. And like conversation every day, listening every day, sometimes reading and sometimes using apps if like the language is like new for me. Mm, okay. And then this question kind of leans into that one as well. Uh, how do you stay motivated uh, with the languages in general? Like, is that even 
a problem for you, like motivation or? Mm, I think like if I don't have people, like for example, if I don't have yeah. friends, if I don't have like that human connection, it's really, really mm. hard to stay motivated for me. Like I, I'm not one of those people that learns the languages just because like I know I like learning structures. I like learning grammar. I'm not one of those people. I've, I've seen some of those people. They exist. People who actually like, like just read. I want to learn the language to read this book, for example. That's not me. I'm, I'm more like I want to talk to people. I want to, you know, um, to see their reactions. I want to interact with them and connect with them and learn about their culture. So I, I think that, you know, I want to, just connect the, the motivation is like the, the human uh part it's a great answer man that's a great answer do you prefer to learn formal or colloquial versions of a language first ah, definitely colloquial like definitely yeah. honestly i don't think i ever learn formal unless i'm like really good unless i'm really good in the language like unless i'm like close to advanced i honestly don't even know how to speak super formally for for example how to write an email because of the, the human thing, I say, like, you usually talk to people. So I, I have to, like, learn. I only know how to do this probably in, like, Portuguese, English, and Spanish, and maybe French, depending on the topic. What is your favorite language-related uh, memory from your travels? So traveling, if you've traveled yeah, around I much. Left. I never left Brazil, but I can say that uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the, the most memorable, like, situation, I could say an event, right? was i'm gonna say two so the first was a polyglot uh, meeting that i went to was like local polyglot meeting and there was a lot of people i spoke spanish there french and a lot of languages it felt really good it was the first time i think i had like uh, this uh kind of experience for real and the second one is going to be polyglot the event that happened this year in rio where I, I i presented there i spoke there and i also like met so many amazing people i have like contact i'm, I'm in contact with them to this day so like it's really really cool I, I intend to go like next year. I intend to go again. It's going to be in Brasilia. So I want to go again. Uh, and it's like awesome. It was awesome. I think like those are the best memories, even though I, I didn't travel much. <laughs> but I remember those. Yeah, and that sounds amazing. How do you manage to keep uh, track of vocabulary in multiple languages? You know, I could lie and tell you. <laughs> Bro, I got it all figured out. I always like take a look at my notes, but I would be lying, you know. Sometimes I forget to look at my notes, but I do have notes. Like I, I write stuff on a, a document. Uh, I don't look at them every day, but eventually, like I, uh, every now and then, I take a look. I look at a, one, uh, uh, some of them, and I remember. Like for example, if I if I'm thinking of something, I and I think like, oh, I think I already seen this, and then I go to my notes, right? Uh, but uh, honestly, that's not my like strongest point. Like my strongest. Uh, you know, ability, let's say, I don't do this very, very often, should do this more often, but I definitely recommend that you write stuff on a, on a page, you know, either a doc, like a document, like Google Doc page or something like that, or if you have a physical note or whatever, I think it's really, really good. What advice uh, do you have for someone looking to become a polyglot? Awesome. Uh, I think first things first, um, if you already speak like a, a foreign language, like if you already went through that process, I think uh, you already can start learning other languages. Uh, uh, some people say that it's best to like, not it's best, but some people uh, recommend that you should learn, that you could learn multiple languages like in the beginning. But I honestly don't like that because if someone doesn't have the experience, in my opinion, it's going to get harder for them like to, you know, divide their attention like that, you know? So I think you should just start, or choose a language that you love the most. And you start with that. And don't think about the future because normally polyglots don't like start wanting to become a polyglot, right? <laughs> normally, that is not the case. Like normally, the case. Like, normally. normally they don't say like, I'm going to become a hyper polyglot. Yes, let's start. No, they don't go like that, right? So one language, start with one language. Start learning. If you already have that, then awesome. Look for other polyglots on YouTube. Start watching their videos. Try, try and modeling the, their methods. Follow me on Instagram. You're going to learn a lot about that. Follow, if you're not following Patrick yet, follow Lead Back Languages uh, on Twitter. He's more active on Twitter, right? On YouTube, right? That was my last question, man. How can people get in contact with you? <laughs> That's right. Uh, you just go, just search Polyglot Sam everywhere. It's the same name on YouTube. Um, on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, Twitter. I'm not as active on Twitter now, but 
I'm going to try and be more active there and TikTok. So, uh, yeah, I'm just uh, trying to, you know, uh, share my love for language learning and actually help people like to learn languages too. So if you have questions, hit me up and, uh, you know, follow awesome pe people like Patrick, like I said, follow the right people, people who are, you know, actually passionate about what they're saying, not people who are trying to just sell stuff to you all the time. Right. And they don't share anything. Like they don't share anything of value. Some people just want to like money, right? Uh, and it's okay to sell, like it's fine. But I, I mean, like I've seen people not share anything like valuable, you know, for their audience. And I think uh, you're doing an amazing job. And uh, I also like, I love, for example, look at Richard Simpad, man, like how much he does, how much stuff he puts out and how much he has contributed. Look at Lampariello too. Like those guys, they really, um, uh, uh, man, like they change lives. That's my, I think they're heroes. Like, uh, so yeah, man, I, I think you should write, should follow the right people, right? To become a polyglot. Amazing, man. I'll leave all the links in the description box below. Go and follow Sam. He's an absolute legend. Bless you, man. Thank you for your time. It's been good fun. It's been quick, but it's been uh, great. Hopefully we could do a longer form uh, conversation, dive into some of the languages that we have in common and just uh, talk about how fun language learning is and hopefully inspire more people to learn foreign languages. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It was fast, but it was productive. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening. God bless, man. Speak soon.